I'm not really much of a fanfic guy. That's probably obvious as I've said it many times, and I will probably continue to keep saying it. But I have been made aware of a particular fanfic known as Nicktoons Loud House Love and War. Now, you see, the thing is, it was brought to my attention about this because the fella who wrote this fanfic used one of my pictures for the cover. And, well, now I have to check it out. I have to read it. I have to. So, uh, well, as far as I know, it's going to be a little dark. It's going to be a little edgy. And I think in order to set the right mood... I'm going to have to get some music. What's that? What's that one everyone keeps? Oh, what is it? Um, everyone uses it for their creepypasta videos. Uh, ah. There it is. Okay. Lovely. Let's get started. An old word from our author. Hey guys, GeoSoul here, and this is my story, Love in the Loud House, and here is a friend! Hello, I am Red, the Pokemon Master, and I am going to be Geo's editor. Also, Lincoln in this has central heterochromia. His left eye is a light baby blue with a dark pink ring inside, and his right eye is a deep, bright crimson with a galaxy purple ring inside. I'm not going to read that disclaimer. I'm just not. I'm already in enough trouble. Let's get started. Lucy Loud walks through the crowded hallways of her elementary school, trying to get into the washroom. Keyword, trying, as she was very mature, unlike most of her classmates. She made her way down the hall until she noticed she was being followed. Seeing it was a, a few boys, she sped up her pace and made it into the girl's washroom, locking the door behind her. She looked around for a way to get out. She saw the window, but it was sadly locked, and she didn't feel like getting in trouble with Laurie. Besides, she couldn't fit into it. The door slammed open as she hid in the stall. You sure you saw her go in here? She heard one of the boys say. Of course I did. No one else would be in this stupid place that has black hair or skin that white. She looked around and a small grin appeared on her face as she saw a small vent just above her. I'm saved, she thought as she started climbing upwards to the vent, hearing them get closer to the stall. She pulled out a large rock from her pocket and threw it into another stall, the sound alerting them as soon as they walked past hers to check it out. She crawled through and replaced the vent cover. That was close, she whispered as she slowly crawled through the dark moldy vents, a small white mouse finding its way through her dress and up to her collar. Hey there, Lucy said as she stroked its back, making it give a squeak of comfort as it curled up into a ball, and she started to climb up in the vents to one of the few places she was ever safe, the roof. She soon made it as she jumped out, landing on an already fallen vent cover. At least I'm safe up here, she said as she looked at the chain door. She walked to the edge of the roof and sat down. She let out a sigh of relief and lied on her back. For the past four years, Lucy has been mercilessly bullied because she was different and how she felt. The teachers didn't care, they only cared about kissing up to Lola and Lana, and Lisa was obviously not needed in school. The principal didn't know, in fact, no one knew. She always hid it, like she always hides. She hates people because she can't trust anyone, except for her family. I can't stay up here all day, she thought, as the small rodent curled in in a ball on her chest. I have to go home eventually, she gently stroked the mouse's fur as she dozed off. Two hours later. A few drops of rain started to fall as Lucy woke up. Huh? The rain started to drop faster as she grabbed her backpack and jumped from the roof, the small mouse in her pocket. She landed on the ground with a thud and ran home. She lifted her backpack up as cover 
and didn't notice the small red stain slowly growing from her sleeve. The rain started to pour down harder as she almost made it home, until she was pulled by the colour of her dress and into an alleyway, and was flung to the ground. So you think I'm stupid, huh? The voice spoke, her bully. What do you want, Dalton? Lucy sneered with a scowl on her face as he grabbed her by the neck and started to punch her hard. Lucy tried to escape his grasp, but to no avail. He slammed her on the ground and did it over and over, throwing his fist right into her gut, causing her to cough out blood. Ah! She yelled as he started to hit her face. She blacked out. The last thing she heard was, You're nothing but a goddamn worthless mistake! I'm a mistake? She thought as she lost consciousness. One hour later. Lucy woke up to something licking her face and she saw her new little mouse, its fur slightly covered in blood. Her blood. She gave it a smile. Hey there. Scooping up the small white rodent with her hands, she slowly got up and grabbed her bag, then limped the rest of the way home, soaking wet. She made her way into Luna's room to get Geo's extra hamster cage, an extra water filter, and wood shavings for the bottom. They're all set, she said as she put it on her bedside table, placed the mouse in and started to drink from the container of water. Lucy walked into the washroom and pulled out a small razor blade from under the sink. She removed her dress, leaving her in shorts and a black tank. She began to care into her arms and body, embedding the words into her skin like bitch, idiot, freak, demon, monster, and right on her chest she carved two word, worthless mistake. She never flinched. She cut herself so many times, she was used to it after she was done she pulled out a large black grandpa revolver and loaded it with a single bullet. She spun, <coughs> she spun the bag. <coughs> she. <laughs> that was my rabbit. <laughs> okay, okay. She spun the barrel and stuck it in her mouth before pulling the trigger, the only sound being a small click. Just my luck, it didn't go off. She curled up into a ball and just sat there, never crying, just like she never has in her life. I just want to die, she lightly sobbed. She didn't hear the front door open as she started to cut her skin again. Hello, anybody home? Her eyes widened. Lincoln! She gasped as she grabbed a lot of gauze and wrapped up her body. Hello, anybody? She tried to teleport, but was too... <laughs> she, she tried to teleport, but was too weak. She climbed into the vents just as Lincoln got to the stairs. Hello? Laurie? Lucy? Luna? Lisa? You in here? Huh? He looked around at Lucy slash Lynn's shared bedroom and saw a small cage by Lucy's bed. Huh? Lucy got a mouse? He said as he saw a red stain on the washroom floor. What in the... He opened the door wider and saw blood splatters all over the floor and the torn, blood-stained, black and white striped dress. Oh my god, Lucy! He shouted. He stopped when he heard whimpering. He opened up the staircase in the hallway and went into the attic. Lucy! He said as thunder started striking, lighting up the attic space. He saw Lucy in the corner with a gun in her mouth and a blade stuck in her arm. He was horrified as he also saw her body covered in bruises and bloody cuts, some even on her throat. She had many hurtful words on her body and what got him the most was the one on her chest. 
she pulled the trigger and just got a click. Lucy! He yelled as he ran in. She spun it again and was preparing to pull it again. I'm sorry, Lincoln, please forgive me, she whispered. But before she did, Lincoln slapped it away as it went up, the lightning masking the sound of the gunshot as a hole was made by their feet. Why? She whispered. Why the hell didn't you just let me fucking die? End of part one.